Welcome to Biomechanics on Our Minds. My name is Melissa Boswell. And I'm Hannah O'Day, and we're PhD students at Stanford University. This podcast is brought to you by the International Society of Biomechanics. It's, it's time, time for, for Boom. Boom. Welcome to Boom, where we have Biomechanics on Our Minds. Boom. 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 Hi, everyone. Welcome to Biomechanics on Our Minds. I'm Melissa. And I'm Hannah. And you are listening to a bonus episode um, about the coronavirus and how the kind of the biomechanics community response to it. So we've kind of put together some resources that we hope will be helpful for you. Um, and, but before we get started, we just wanted to um, send some positive thoughts and love to everyone that's been affected by this pandemic. Yeah, we just want to be open and share a little bit of our experiences. We know everyone's experience is really different, but we are all in this together and we just want to say we're here and we're going to get through this together. So hopefully this episode offers at least some more information about specifically what our communities are doing. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm glad that we are able to share some of the, these things and, and some of these initiatives have, have really been um, amazing that have come out of this really tough time. Um, I know that recording this episode like was also difficult and like trying to figure out how to navigate this and kind of what was, you know, our response going to be or how we're, you know, um, because I feel like um, we've been pretty fortunate in that we can still continue to work um, and are in, you know, safe homes and can still be in contact with friends and family um, and so far have remained healthy, but that's not the case for everyone. So um, we just wanted to, yeah, acknowledge that a little bit before, before we started. It's kind of crazy that I think Melissa and I are definitely people that always seem to know how to talk to each other and what to say. And even we've had some trouble putting words to our feelings and thoughts these days. So yeah, it's just been a really crazy time. Yeah, we, we actually like tried to record this a couple days ago, but it just like ended up in tears because we are just yeah, it's just hard to to talk about, to understand, and to know how to respond. But we're going to do our best to um, stick with you. And hopefully through this, you might end up with some um, new information or, you know, something interesting that might help um, things be a little bit easier for you. Yeah, I remember I hardly ever go on Twitter, but it seems like social media is just everywhere these days. And one of the things I saw from the Journal of Biomechanics, which just kind of stuck out in the feed of things that was going on as a little bit of a, a positive reframe of how they were handling the fact that a lot of people can't collect data right now. And they were offering mm -hmm. um, the opportunity to submit review articles and really take the time to look through current literature and things like that. Um, so I just thought that was an awesome initiative that they were putting out to the community. Yeah, I think that's really great. I think um, it may be some relief to people who, you know, there's some people find it difficult to work through these times and other people like really need the work to like keep them busy. And also just like, you know, people are excited about their work and wanting to continue it even through difficult times. So it's really amazing that they're helping people um, be able to still continue that even if they're not able to do physical experiments. Um, another initiative that's been really exciting um, was started by Stuart McEarley Naylor, who is a biomechanist at the University of Suffolk. And um, he started <laughs> an online sports biomechanics lecture series. This uh, is featured on YouTube at Sports Biomechanics Lecture Series. Um, you can also find them tweeted out. His Twitter handle is at Biomechstu. So it's E-I-O-M-E-C-H-S-T-U. 
and he tweets out some of the lectures, some of which have included biomechanics and sports injury prevention, cricket bowling biomechanics, cricket batting biomechanics. Um, so it seems like there's some really fun topics and really amazing people who have taken the time to post some cool lectures online. Another initiative on the theme of really spreading biomechanics love is a biomechanics journal club that was started on the popular Reddit platform led by Ryan Alcantara. And he's also posting about it on Twitter. You can find him at his Twitter handle at Ryan underscore Alcantara underscore. Uh, So one of the um, themes so far has been asking about my manuscript and the manuscript was improving the energy economy of human running with powered an unpowered ankle exoskeleton assistance. Um, so this was a paper published in 2020 and they had um, doctors Steve Collins, Kirby and Witt and Peter Fears. Yeah, so they were on answering questions uh, about the manuscript, I think in real time. And, and I think um, there'll be, you can still go and look at them and there'll be some other times for discussion too. Um, another initiative which we're really excited about um, is by four master students from Cologne who are currently building a new biomechanics blog. And so they reached out to us about a collaboration. Um, you wanna give them, you wanna say some more details? Yeah, it's really cool because this blog is really geared toward beginners. It's meant to make it easier for them to learn more about the field and transition into the field if they want to. And on one hand, they want to teach basics. And on the other hand, they also want to write about what's going on in the biomechanics society. So it's really cool how um, they're opening it up and making it easy to get excited about biomechanics. Yeah, we're really excited to do an interview with them this week. So that'll probably be up in a few weeks um, where we can learn more about the blog. It's biomechanist.net and it's just a really fun initiative so I'm looking forward to talking about them and learning more about that. Melissa and I are also taking the most popular course at Yale University which is called the science of well-being. Um, I think yeah I'm just looking at Coursera now it's available free on Coursera and 1.9 million people are currently enrolled in the course which is really amazing. Yeah, it's available for free on Coursera. And Hannah sent this to me. And I actually, I didn't realize it before, but the person who um, is teaching this, Lori Santos, um, she has a podcast called The Happiness Podcast. And my mom had sent it to me before. Um, and so I listened to a couple episodes recently and she has, um, some bonus episodes on coronavirus that are really helpful, um, on some ways to kind of, um, manage it emotionally. And so I was really excited to start the class. And so every week there's different practices that she suggests. So she teaches, teaches us some about, about the science of well-being, and then suggest some practices for us to try for the week. And so this week, our practices are savoring and gratitude. And where savoring is like the practice of being in the moment and really enjoying what you're doing. Um, so I was wondering, Hannah, what what did you savor so far this week? It's funny when you said that just now, because I was thinking just now about how I was savoring this recording. Aww. That was the most <laughs> delayed awe I've ever heard, but it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I think that I savored a few conversations this week, ones with people that were closest to me, and just finding it funny how people notice things in moving slower these days. And it's just been really beautiful to Mm -hmm. have people sharing stories of things they found in nature or things they've noticed about a walk that they do every day or something like that. And I think that's what I've been savoring. 
It's so funny that you say that because what I savored yesterday was a walk with my roommates where we just noticed a bunch of random things about the area that we were living in. And one of the fun things we kept doing is talking about like what each house looked like. Like there was this one house that was like white with like blue trim and it was like really flat. I was like, that's definitely a fish. <laughs> or like, there's like a really like small boxy one. And we we're like, ah, that's like, a, that has to be like an orthodontist. <laughs> like, it was just like, it's so fun. And there's this house, we found like the tiniest little lion statues on somebody's steps that I'd never noticed before. But it was a good time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's it's good to like, be, yeah, be aware of um things that you're savoring because I think also like when you have this awareness of like savoring it then it makes you like extra um kind of mindful of staying in the moment I really like they call the class homeworks rewirements it's kind of like a requirement but rewirements Mm -hmm. because they really are all about trying to rewire some of our habits and mental processes that tend to fall into default states that aren't necessarily the most healthy practices. So the gratitude practice that I think Melissa and I are pretty well versed in because we practice it a lot with each other and on our own, but it's definitely a difficult thing to do at this time. It's easy to kind of see it and get bogged down by a lot of the things that are going on around us and it's been really helpful, I think, to really intentionally come to that practice um, in this time and try to reflect on some of the good things going on. And I know, Melissa, you've also been really great about this. And I was just wondering, what are some of the things you you were grateful for? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I, I am really grateful for my roommates definitely and for my friends like you that I can still stay in touch with and laugh with um through this time um we also adopted a cat so I hopped on that pet adoption bandwagon (laughs) through this and um while he spent the first week like under the bed um terrified he's like really started to warm up and yesterday he was purring for the first time and I was really grateful for that um (laughs) uh there's yeah so that was what I was excited about I also was you know grateful that I'm still able to work out and run um and be in contact with my family um that's all been like really important and keeping me sane through this what are some things you've been grateful for I as I was thinking about the I usually do three things so I feel like five was like also kind of a new a new thing to think about um I actually I have this well no one else can see it except Melissa but I'll show Melissa I have this sort of mosaic of pictures on my wall that's in the shape of a fish right next to my bed and I was just lying in bed like thinking about my five things I was grateful for and I was looking at those pictures and I just felt like they captured a lot of the people and experiences that I've had that I've been so grateful for that have just been so phenomenal and so many of those people are still in my life in some form or another and I just felt like yeah, I think it's really all about the people these days and always. And I think just bringing that to the forefront has been um, how I've been focusing my gratitude practice. Yeah, that's really beautiful. And I think it's really nice to be able to think of those memories and let those bring you some happiness and joy. Um. I've been reading the book, uh, Radical Compassion by Tara Tara Brock. And (laughs) um, she gives some ideas for a practice for um, self-compassion. And so if you're interested, I would look up the RAIN practice. I've been um, just like R-A-I-N. If you're interested in doing some self-compassion practices, Um, But I also have learned recently, um, 
while doing some readings on self-compassion about how um, in order to have compassion, um, you need self-kindness, um, a sense of like global humanity and connection to other humans um, and then mindfulness. And I've also been reading about um, how, because I guess one of the things I've struggled with with this whole thing is like just feeling this like huge sadness for everyone else um, that's suffering. Um, and a, what I've been learning with like compassion is, you know, how to kind of balance um, feeling sad um, for other people and also yet trying to not like live my life in sadness, right? So that's um, been really helpful to me is to like do some of these self-compassion practices to try to like maintain um, my happiness. It's hard because like sometimes I feel guilty, you know, for like being happy in such a difficult time. Um, but I think, um, yeah, some of these practices have been really helpful in trying to like balance, balance those feelings. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing all of those awesome resources and those experiences. And I just feel so lucky to like really lucky to have you as a friend, because like we talked about uh, earlier in the episode, um, Melissa and I did just have a moment where kind of the weight of everything I think just really got through and I think it's so important to have someone to let into that experience with you because sometimes you just need to feel what you need to feel and like it's just so I'm just so grateful to have someone on the other side that's there with me and can feel that and we can like just kind of work through it together. <laughs> well, my legs just went out. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that lightened them. That darkened the room, but lightened the mood. <laughs> uh, sorry, literally, my every all of my lights and computers just uh, fell asleep. Melissa has been spending way too much time with me because that is something that I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am also thankful for you and our conversations and that um, you have the ability to make me laugh and smile even through these tough times. Um, and so I also would like to just, you know, open the conversation up to anyone that, you know, wants to talk with us and share their experiences. Um, if there's anything, you know, we'd love to hear some of the ways you've been able to um, kind of make things a little bit easier for you or some strategies that you've used um, at this time. And if you have anything you're savoring or grateful for, we're also happy to hear those things too or if you just want to take the course with us and have discussions you know where to find us <laughs> you know where to find us <laughs> um yeah we're on twitter at biomechanics oom so you can tweet your thoughts to us or you can email us at biomechanics on our minds at gmail.com we would love to hear from you and sending lots of light and love to everyone <laughs>